Guys, this is Lord Shale speaking on behalf of our show sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so you can officially call yourself a lord or a lady. Established Titles is not just about your ego. You also get to do some good. In addition to your new fancy title, Established Title supports global charities like One Tree Planet and Trees for the Future to help with the afforestation effort. Your title pack gets you at least one square foot of dedicated land in a private estate in Scotland. Your certificate features a unique plot number where you can see the exact location of your land. And right now, Established Titles is holding 200 plots of land right next to mine. So come join me in the Bad Guy Inc. Kingdom. Getting this certificate even allows you to officially change your name to Lord or Lady. Put it on your credit card, put it on your plane tickets, or if you're so inclined, put it on your dating profile. Makes for a great last minute gift. And there's even couples packs that come with adjoining plots of land. Established Titles is having a great limited time sale. Go to establishedtitles.com slash chale to save 10% off today. Remember to use the promo code CHAIL or just click on the link below. Allegedly, allegedly, the story goes like this. Corey Sanhagen called out Cheeto Vera. And Cheeto says yes. So they're going to go and do a main event somewhere. And Sanhagen says no. Now, I have to word, I have to word it like this, allegedly, because I can't find this. I, I'm looking around the interwebs. I can't find this story out there. but. The source is this was revealed by Cheeto Bear on the MMA Hour. Right, right there, Hawani. It's interesting to me. It's interesting for a number of reasons. First off, that's an awesome fight. Cheeto Vera versus Corey Sandhagen. I had not thought of that one. And I don't know how I missed it. That's really, if on any given day, Corey Sandhagen's the guy. On any given day. Now, Hold the thought because Cheeto Vera would be a very clear number one contender for me. Very clearly, Cheeto Vera would be fighting for the title next. In a lot of other walks and generations and times within our sport, right? If I got wouldn't got the calendar out, I could just start pointing to different years and months, different champions. A lot of times in this sport, if you fight and defeat a former champion, which is hard to come by, it's hard to even get on the docket with a former champion, but if you do that and you succeed, you then fight for the championship. Vera not only did that, he stopped the former champion. So he goes into another fight where he fights another former champion. Both of these guys are going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. Frank Yeager, Dominic Cruz, not only did Vera win, he stopped them both. But you got to take a real good look at Sugar Sean. Sugar Sean has what's called the mandate of the masses. He's the popular one. He's the one that people love. Cheeto beat him too. I realize that that was reversed by the Sugar State Athletic Commission, but you do understand my point that for Cheeto to be arguing and to be bickering and to be fighting for a number one spot would be very reasonable. It's a little bit of a different time right now, particularly if you have the insertion of Henry Cejudo, but I haven't heard any discussion of Cheeto versus Henry. Not even talking belly who and back and forth and trolling. I've just never seen these guys put together. Now, hold that thought as well. Because also on the MMA Hour, Ariel had a guest. I would pay the... I, I, I don't know his name. Ariel had a gentleman on the show. In fact, I screenshotted him and sent it to Ariel to ask for his name so that I could include it in this story. But the guest was maintaining that number one contenders matches should be five rounds. Absolutely was the word that he used. Ariel sought clarification. The guy responded. He doubled down and he said, absolutely. You always know who's a fighter and who's not. I mean, there's always going to be tells. You're, you're always going to, you could ask some very basic questions before you ever said, are you a fighter? Have you ever done this? There's things that you could, and they will reveal themselves. But all in one thing, and the guy says, absolutely. Now, if you wanted to be somebody that was looked at in the future as any kind of saver to the sport, if you want to be on the right side of history, you make the argument now that no fight would be five rounds. You're not going to win the debate. The commissions will hang their hat on fighter safety. First and foremost, I understand that's not. I understand they're here for commerce. But believe me, you don't have to correct me on what a commission does. 
but they will take that commerce and operate on the taxpayer funds, which subsidize every single commission in this country except for one, under the guise of fighter safety. There is no person, regardless of IQ or intellectual understanding, that would ever make an argument that doing something for 25 minutes is safer than doing the exact same thing for 15. And so when I hear this guy on Ariel's show arguing it should absolutely be for five rounds, first off, let me stop you right there. There should be no five-round fights. There's no sport in the world that works like this. None. The Super Bowl does not become five quarters, just by example. The 100-yard dash, the gold medal match, isn't 103 yards. I mean, just so that we're real fair. So now you're arguing that more should be put. The main events should not be five rounds. Nothing should be five rounds. The championship matches never should have been put there. I'm not going to win this. This isn't the hill that I want to die on, and this isn't where I want to dig in either. But if we're going to put all main events as five, okay, fine. We, we have to put up with that one time in a night. Great. Championship matches. Now we've got a history of it. That's just the way it's always been. We're going to fall on the side of history. Okay, great. I'll, I'll keep my mouth quiet for that too. But when we start adding other matches that are five rounds that are neither, that's weird. And if you wanted to be on the right side of history, you would stand up and argue against that. The fact that Chandler and Poirier are going to fight for five rounds and they're neither a main event or a title fight, it's weird. It's weird. And to try to bring somebody in and throw them in a, and leave them in there for two extra rounds because you could get a seat on Ariel's show and think that you're coming from the high-handed approach. Look, it's weird. It's weird and it's wrong. And he wouldn't want to do it. I don't know what this guy does, and I want to call him New York Rick just because there's a guy called New York Rick that goes on Ariel's show all the time. I'm not sure it is. In all fairness, I'm not. It's a guy who's a very handsome guy. He had a nice beard. But he wouldn't want to do that. I don't know what he does for a living, but if I was to come in and tell him he's going to do 70% more of it, he wouldn't like that. If I was to tell him that it's going to be in the most dangerous field that there possibly is, and you're going to do it 70% more just because that makes sense and you're a number one contender, he's not going to like that. He's going to think I'm an unreasonable person. And I would be. I'd be very unreasonable. And I don't know. I can't confirm for you that Sanhagen called Cheeto Vera out. I didn't hear it. I can't confirm you that Cheeto Vera turned the fight down. I can't, I can't find it. But I do know that this was Cheeto's stance, and I would wonder if they were tied together. I would wonder if Sanhagen said I would like Cheeto, and then he said no thank you to Cheeto, if it had to do with the fact of the placement of the card being the main event. Meaning the same thing that I asked to do, you're now telling me I have to do two more rounds than I was prepared for. I don't know. I can't confirm for you that this happened. I can just confirm for you that the story was told on Ariel's show. These two might not tie in together. They were both on the segment. I do think that it's relevant. I don't think that Sandhagen, if he called for a shot, can get it. I mean, this is the guy they were going to give a world title fight to and didn't know that he was being prompted for a world title fight. Like, I don't think Sandhagen has the power in our sport to call for a shot and get it. But maybe he did. Maybe he did call for Cheeto Vera, the number one contender. Maybe he did want all of that on the line. And maybe for the first time ever, somebody listened to him and gave him what he want, perhaps. And when he then comes back and says, I know I asked for it, but now I don't want it. Is that because of the five round situation? I'm not answering a question right now, guys. I'm asking a question. But Ariel had a guest on his show that says a fighter under contract should have to do 70% more than his contract calls for. 70% more than he's been agreed to do. Ariel's show didn't go 70% longer. And whatever this guy does for a living, which, I mean, he's a handsome, he seemed like a nice guy, but if he's got time to go on Ariel's show in the middle of a work week, in the middle of a work day, he probably, right, before he returns to mom's basement, but he's not going to want to stay in mom's basement 70% of the time longer. Nobody could ask you to do that and be a readable person. Nobody could do that and pretend that they support you. Nobody could pretend that they're looking out for you when they're asking you to do something 70% more time than you've already agreed to do. But this guy on Ariel's show did.